Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the fragment Photoshop action. So the way this action works, similar to all my other actions, is that you start with a photo, you fill in your subject with a colour, it doesn't matter what colour, uh, you run the action, and in this case the fragment action will create all these effects for you automatically. Um, everything's layered, so you've got a lot of control um, over the final look of your design. So I will just show you some more examples of the effect. So here was my original photo, that was after running the action. Okay, so I'm going to jump into Photoshop now, and uh, here is my photo. So just a couple of things you need to check off, just to make sure you run into no um, errors when you play back the action. Um, so firstly, uh, go to your layer panel here, go to this top right hand corner icon, uh, click on that, it's chopped off on my screen, so I'm just going to detach this panel for a sec. Click on this icon, go to panel options, uh, right down the bottom here, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is ticked. Click OK on that. Uh, I'm just gonna put this back. Uh, next, go to Image Mode. Make sure you're in RGB Color Mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. Uh, next, check the image size. And uh, always make sure you're working with high resolution photos with uh, any photo effect actions. Uh, from my experience, the best range is between 2,000 and 4,000 pixels, okay? Um, you see the resolution of my photo here, so always try to work with high resolution photos. Cancel that. Uh, so now what I need to do is load up the brushes that were included in the download. So if you just hit B on the keyboard, or activate the brush tool over here, then right click anywhere over the canvas, that'll bring up the brushes panel. So what we need to do here is replace all these brushes with those included in the download. So click on this icon go to replace brushes and select the fragment brushes.abr file that was included in the download click on that and you'll see uh, it'll replace all the brushes with uh, the fragment brushes so click away from that um, still with the brush tool open hit B uh, always make sure that the brush opacity is set to 100% before you run an action if there's ever brushes included um, in my actions, always make sure firstly that they're loaded up uh, before you run the action and that the opacity is at 100%. Okay, next what we're going to do is create a new layer. So go to layer, new layer, and this must be called brush, all in lowercase and no spaces. The action will not work at all if this step not is not done. Uh, so click on that. And the idea with the brush layer is that we want to fill in our subject uh, with a color. So I'm just going to hit W to activate the one tool. Okay, and I'm going to make sure sample all layers is ticked. If that's unticked and I start clicking around on this layer, you'll see that it's just going to select my entire canvas. I'll deselect that. But if I click on sample all layers, it will uh, sample all the layers below. So you can see that it's starting to select the background. So I'm just holding down shift as I click around uh, my subject to increase the selection. Okay, uh, I'm just going to zoom right in here. Get this a little bit. Now what I need to do is invert this selection. So control shift I or command shift I. Okay, so now you can see that it's just outlined my subject. So now what I need to do is fill in my subject with a color. Now it doesn't matter what color you fill it in with, so uh, a quick way to fill a selection in with a foreground color is to uh, hit Alt Backspace or Option Backspace, and that'll fill in the subject. So I'm just gonna zoom in here, I'm just gonna grab my pen tool and just fill in this little bit. Okay, uh, so what we need to do now is load up the Actions panel. So go to Window, Actions, and it will pop up over here. Click on this top right hand corner icon and go to load actions. Um, navigate to the fragment.atn file, it was included in the download, and it will pop up here. Uh, so everything's set to go, okay? 
Um, I'm just going to quickly double check my brush passes at 100%. So I hit B. Yep, it's at 100%. So all you need to do now is select the fragment action and click play. Now I'm going to click play and there's going to be a pop up that comes up almost immediately. And this is the last step you need to do um, before the action runs through to the end. Uh, it just says in the next step, select the fragment texture to .jpg file that was included in the download. After you have selected the texture, simply move Scarlet over your subject, then press enter on the keyboard to continue the action playback. Uh, if you need help with the step, just check back on this tutorial. Uh, now press continue below to proceed. So when this pops up, just click continue. And all you need to do here is navigate to the fragment underscore texture dot JPEG that was included in the download. So double click on that, and it will now appear uh, inside your Photoshop file. Now, you'll notice that the action hasn't continued playing back. Uh, we've got a box around our texture. So all we need to do here, I'm just gonna zoom out. All you need to do is just move this over your subjects. You can scale it up as well, just to fill in um, your entire subject. And when you position it, just hit enter. Okay, and that's all you need to do. So the action is gonna now run through to the end. Uh, the action's got a lot of layers to build, so it's gonna take anywhere between three to five minutes to play back. Uh, it really depends on the size of your photo and the speed of your computer. So uh, just hang out for a couple of minutes and uh, it'll be done. I'm just going to fast forward the video, get to the result, and then we'll jump into all the layers. All right, the action's all done, and you can see the result that I've got. So just close up the action here and the actions panel. Uh, this so before that, this action here, I'll come back to this. Um, this is to be run if you want after you've run the uh, the fragment action. It will just smooth out your design and give it a bit of an oil paint look. Um, so we'll come back to that, but I'll just close the actions panel. I'm just gonna um, stretch this out a bit. Now, the first thing you wanna do, and you wanna do this with all of my actions, is to collapse all the folders that are open when the actions just finish playing. So you can see all the folders are open here, and it's just annoying having to go through and manually close them all one by one. So the quick way to do that is to hold down Control Alt or Command Option and click on this arrow next to the folder icon and then reopen uh, the folder and everything is collapsed. <coughs> okay? So, just gonna zoom in a bit. Now, the, the very first layer that I like to jump to is this one here. It's called Main Photo and I've got in brackets here, Brush Mask. Now if I turn off this layer, you'll see we've got this really, we've got this shattered version of our photo sitting underneath. And the really cool thing about this layer is that you can select the mask and if I grab a black brush, so if I just hit B, right click, activate the brush brushes and just select the soft brush in the top left hand corner. Now if I start brushing black onto this mask, we're gonna hide this layer. And by doing that, we're revealing this shattered look um, underneath. So I can just brush away here and you can start to blend your photo in a lot more with the background. Okay, right down through here, through the guitar. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's always the first thing that I like to jump to when the action's just finished, is to just brush around your photo and blend in your subject with this shadow texture in the background, it looks really cool. Okay, now the next layers that I like to always check out are these two here. I've got glass large and glass small. Most of the time when you run the action, particularly on people as your subject, you're gonna get these uh, large bits of glass that are sitting on top of your subject's face and you either wanna delete them or move them around. So if I just hide these two layers, you can see what they are. So there's the small and here is the large. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn off the large for a second. So you can see I've got these two um, small pieces here. Now there's two ways I could do this. I could um, just hit M on the keyboard or grab the uh, rectangular marquee tool here. I can drag a box around this bit of glass, hit V, activate the move tool, and I can move this around if I want to. Or I can simply just select the mask, grab my black brush, and just brush it away. Okay? But I might keep it, I just might move it a little bit. Whoops, I'll select this. Move it, you can also rotate it as well. Control T or Command T, okay. Uh, this guy here, I'll just move him out of the way a bit, rotate it a bit. All right, 
I'm going to turn the large back on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now, these two up the top, I don't think I really want, so I'm just going to select the mask and uh, just brush those away. Just like that. Everything else is looking pretty cool. Um, don't forget, you can just move these around. You're not restricted to where they are. You can um, you can see as I move them around, you know, you can get different looks. You can duplicate the layer, create more glass. Control or Command J. I could do that. Um, I could flip it vertically. Edit, transform, uh, flip vertical, wherever that is, down the bottom. Okay, you can create a lot more that way. Uh, that looks kind of cool. I like this bit of red up here. So I might actually just keep that. Now another thing to look out for is uh, when you select one of these glass layers, you'll, you'll notice that the fill is at 72% and it's the same with the small. Now if I just select the large and I crank this to 100%, you'll notice uh, I'll go from zero and I'll slowly drag it up. You'll see that the glass starts to fill in a lot more. So by default I've set it at 72%. So if there's a bit of glass over your subject's face, you can still um, see the details in in the face, but if you turn this to 100, it's going to completely fill in the glass, uh, and you won't be able to see through it. <clears throat> so, um, just experiment with changing that fill. That looks actually really good um, at 100%. So I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to check out the small. Bring that to 100%. Actually, like that. Oh, I might just bring it down just a little bit. Okay, so play around with that. So they're the first layers that I like to jump to. Um, and right down the bottom here, I've highlighted these in purple as well, because these is more glass layers. You've got glass, extra large, and glass, extra large too. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit. I'll start moving. This, these glass layers sit behind um, everything, so you can see that there. So you can move them around. Might just move that up there a bit. And then you've got this one here. These are the largest ones. They sit right at the back, so you can position them where you want. I might move them there. Don't forget, you can rotate them, um, do what you want there. I'm just going to zoom back in. <clears throat> okay, so I'll just jump back up to the top now. Um, this layer here, pretty simple. We've got overall contrast, in brackets here, opacity. Um, whenever I've got a layer with opacity in, uh, in brackets, I'm just telling you to play around with this layer through its opacity. So currently it's at 30%. Um, if you just hit the numbers on the keyboard, that's a quick way to adjust opacity. So if I hit zero, it's going to change it to 100%. Two, 20%, three. So that's a quick way to play around with the opacity. Or you can click on this word opacity here. Click, hold, and drag to the right. That will also increase the opacity. So I'm just going to bring it up a little bit, about 40%, maybe 30%. Uh, color options, if you go inside here, I've set up um, just 10 simple color options uh, and the way these work is that you just turn on the eye here for the folder and that will apply a different um, color. Okay, so, and you can combine these as well, so, you know, I could turn on color option 9 um, and then experiment with a few others, uh, maybe color option 1. And you don't have to use 100% of that color, so you know, I'll just drag this back to zero. And I'm just going to increase it a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm at 40%. So you can combine multiple folders together to sort of build different color looks. Um, this layer here, use single color fill. If you turn this on, it's kind of just going to apply um, a general color over your entire design. And you can just double click in this box here and just change these these colors here, all right? This folder here, split color toning. By default, I've got it, the visibility for the folder turned off. Um, if you turn it on, the first thing you'll notice is that um, half of your design will be blue. So if you go inside this folder, the two layers here, have got the left side color and the right side color. So you can see the blue here. So if you just double click on this box, you can grab a new color and that will fill in the left side. Okay, and same with the right. So you can create a split color uh, tone look um, to your image. And generally what I like to do, if I want to go for the, the split tones, I start off, um, I don't apply the color options first. 
I just get these two colors and then I jump back into here and then start experiment, experimenting with the different color options to see what works with that um, split color tone look. Uh, I'm just going to turn that, kind of like it, maybe the blue is a little bit too strong. Just a little hint of blue, that'll do. <coughs> so this folder here, um, photo lines, when the action is just finished playing back, I'm just going to hide that mask for a second, and you turn photo lines on, you'll notice that it does um, nothing. But when you start brushing away and blending your um, your subject into the shadow texture and then turn the photo lines on, you'll see that you get an outline of your subject uh, that shows through. Now, if, if you go inside this folder, you've got a few layers. Down the bottom here, you've got this one called Normal Lines. And you can see as I turn it on and off, you can see it starts to outline the subject. Um, you've got this this layer above that's called Normal Lines underscore Single Color. If you turn the one on, it will apply a solid color to those lines. So you can just double click on this box here and you know um, choose a different color to fill in those lines. <coughs> and then you've got this one at the top here called Offset Lines. Um, that's just similar to the normal lines is that the lines are kind of offset. So if I turn this on and off and you look at the bottom of the guitar here, the lines are a bit more wavy. It's just um, giving it a different type of look. So you can experiment with that one. Uh, but for this design, I don't think I'll keep the lines on. I kind of like it just uh, blending into the shadow texture there. So this layer here, brightness booster and opacity, by default is quite low, 10%. But as I increase it, it will basically just increase the light intensity behind your subject. So like that there. <coughs> so yeah, by default it's 10%. Um, just play around the passive there, see if it suits your photo or not. Darken edges, I'll turn it to 100% and zero. So you can see that there. Um, we're about 60%. All right, so next down is the shadow parts folder. Now what I might do here, I might just turn off the visibility for all of these uh, layers and folders for a second. So just, just so that you can see uh, what's going on. Uh, I'm just going to hide the main photo for a second. Uh, I'll turn on the background color layer, sorry. Okay, so you can see that when I've turned all these off, um, you've just got the visibility of all these glass layers here left on. Uh, now, shadow parts, if I turn that folder on, so you can see that there are all these little cuts um, behind that sit behind your subject. Alright, uh, and if you just go inside this folder, you've got a few other different folders. Um, this one here doesn't really do too much. It's just got a couple of sort of random cuts here and there. Uh, shadow part set one. If you go inside here, <coughs> there's a bunch of different layers. Um, and if you turn on these color box, the visibility for these layers here, you can apply a single color to some of the cuts. Okay, so if you want to experiment with that, you can do that. Um, you've got these two layers here. Uh, I oh, spelled that wrong, but it's meant to be shadow highlights and highlights glow. Uh, if you turn that on and off, you can see it boosts up the brightness of a lot of those um, those clearer um, glass cuts. So you can see that there. Uh, this one here, shadow part. Now shadow parts two is basically the main one that um, fills in your subjects with all the smaller cuts. Okay, and if you don't want them, just just turn them off. So you can see that, that that there creates a pretty cool look. So I could turn this layer back on. Uh, maybe I didn't want to brush away. Maybe just keep it like that. Okay, so again, just remember you're not restricted to um, having all of these layers turned on when the action's finished. You're free to just experiment how you want to experiment. Um, so I'm just going to hide that again. Okay, extra cuts. They're just some small, uh, some different sort of shapes, uh, cuts there. So you can turn that on and off. You might not want them. It's up to you. Okay, uh, underlined photo visibility. By default, this was turned off. Um, if you turn on, you need to go inside here and turn these two on. It doesn't really do too much. It just adds, uh, it just fills in, say if you turn the main photo uh, layer off, it just helps bring a little bit more visibility back into uh, your subject. So maybe, you know, I, um, I'm just going to 
I'm just going to duplicate this for a second. Let's hide that layout. I'm just going to fill this in black. So say, yeah, I turn these two on, and maybe I just want the visibility for his face to show through like this, and the rest you can you can still make out what's uh, what's happening, and I think looks that looks really cool. So maybe you want to turn these two on and go for that type of approach. Okay. Um, but I'll just keep it that, like that for a sec. Uh, grunge textures, let me just turn this back off for a sec. Grunge textures, I'll turn this one on. So this, yeah, these grungy textures sort of sit behind everything to just give, give everything a lot more detail, give the design a lot more detail. Um, just turn them on, that folder on and off to see how it affects your design, if you like it or not. Um, there's a bunch of different folders here you can play around with. Uh, I've gone through these two here glass, uh, zoom lines, okay, that sits behind everything, um, uh, so yeah, just turn that one on and off, see if you like it or not, uh, background texture, very soft background texture that sits behind everything, and you've got this one here, photo color blur, <coughs> okay, this just extends uh, the colors of your photo, sort of bleeds them out a bit more, okay, and when we turn all those back on, we get the completed design. So there's a lot you can deconstruct here, um, you know, and really fine tune it how you want. Now the background uh, color layer here, just double click on this box and you can change it to a white. Um, I could color pick the red off this guitar. Okay, uh, use a different color background there if you want. Uh, if you want the, if you want it to fall back onto the original photo background, all you need to do is just hide this layer, and that's actually falling uh, back onto the background of our original photo now. And you might want to remove the background texture because that'll be sitting on top of it. So now you can see the wall. If I just hide this, so you can see the wall texture there. So that's um, coming through. That looks kind of cool. Just look better than this. I might just keep that. Now, if you want to uh, export your design on a transparent background just hide these two layers here, okay? Uh, and you can see that the transparency is starting to come through. Now, if you want it to be a bit more transparent, you just need to experiment with hiding some layers and seeing, um, you know, how it affects. So you can see the transparency coming through there. All right, so just go up these layers one by one and see which ones you want to export, uh, you don't want to export with, basically. I'll turn those back on. So that's, that's essentially it. Uh, it's very simple to use. Now this uh, folder here, the main folder, you notice that I've got a mask on it. So say, um, you know, I could hit G, grab gradient, my gradient tool out, uh, make, this, make sure this is from black to white. If I just drag a gradient here, I might just reverse that actually. You can see that the effect uh, now blends uh, onto the background. So you know, maybe you want only the effects coming down from the top and not the bottom. So I could just draw a gradient from the bottom to the top here. I'll make that a little bit higher. So now you can see the effect starts at the top here and sort of fades off as we go down. So you can experiment um, with the mask there as well. <coughs> Don't forget, I put masks on every single layer and folder. That's to give you complete control over that layer's visibility. So yeah, uh, don't forget that. Now, the last um, thing to show was this oil paint finish. Okay, now the way this works is you just select it, click play, uh, it'll just take a couple seconds and it's just going to add a little bit of smoothing over, um, over everything. Okay, so that's finished. I'm just going to zoom in a bit here so you can see what's going on. So if you're familiar with the oil paint filter, uh, filter stylized oil paint. Uh, that's what I'm using, but I just um, change a few things around. So it creates these two layers at the top here. Okay, so if I hide them and show them again, I might just group them actually and just turn it on and off so you can see a bit more of what's happening. Okay, um, just going to select this group. So there's two layers here. You've got uh, this one here, it's got oil paint finish. Okay. And then you've got this one here, the sharpening, which sort of brings out the details uh, a lot more. So I found that this 
um, depending on what you're going for and you know your photo sometimes this oil paint finish looks really cool um, so you might you definitely want to check it out after you run on the action uh, and you can also control it say if I don't want this oil paint look over his face uh, I could just select this mask here grab my black brush and just brush away you might want to do it on the sharpen as well to remove that and if you want it to be a bit more subtle you can shift select these layers and then I can drag its opacity back down to zero and or just hit five on the keyboard and that'll change the opacity of both those layers uh, 50% so it's just a subtle oil paint effect okay um, and guys that is it if you wanted to run the action again I always keep the brush layer uh, hanging around so you can just drag that to the top and shift select all these delete them and then run the action again <clears throat> every time you run the action the arrangement of all these um, of all these shapes is going to be it's completely randomized so you know it might be worth running the action you know three or four times and then saving out each Photoshop file and then just comparing um, which one you like the best uh, but don't forget you can move all the all the layers around sort of position them where you want okay and guys, don't forget you can be really creative as well with the use of text. So, and because everything's layered, you know, you can push um, a text layer down into uh, amongst these layers here, and it'll sort of sit behind all the glass. So, for example, I'll just type out a uh, fragment here. I'll just scale this up. Okay. Now, because we've got all these layers, um, you know, I can just put this down right at the bottom here under shadow parts, and you'll see that it sits behind. Um, all those parts there, you know, and you can move it up higher or down really low behind everything else. See that there? Okay, so yeah, experiment with um, using text in your designs as well. Now, say um, I wanted, um, you know, the ability to be able to shatter the text like I've done with this main photo here. So you can see how we just brushed away on that on that layer there, and it's got. Uh, all the shadow bits underneath. What if I wanted text to be a part of um, the design and whoops um, and also have that ability to to brush away on the mask and have that uh, be shattered underneath. So you would have to do that uh, at the beginning of the action. So I'm just going to hide all these for a second. Okay. So say I wanted um, I'm just going to type out fragment again. Okay, say I wanted this text to be in the final, uh, in the result of the action and have that ability to um, have it shatter everywhere. Um, what you'll need to do is firstly create your, your text and when you've created it, duplicate the layer, Control or Command J. Uh, I'm going to explain to you why we have to duplicate it in a sec. So firstly, uh, what we need to do is merge these two layers together uh, because before you run the action you can't have any other layer but your background and your brush layer so if you run the action with some text layers hanging around you're going to run into errors so let's merge these two together control or command E that'll merge that uh, onto our background layer so you can see if I move that around it's all merged on one layer now I've got this copy of the text here now the reason why I've copied that is because we need to use that as a selection to then apply it to our brush layer. Okay. So what um, you need to do is hold down Control or Command and click on this layer. Okay. So you can see that's created a selection. I'll then select my brush layer. Now fill this selection in with a color. Alt backspace, Option backspace. Okay. So now you can see the brush layer has our text on it. Okay, so that's what you need to do um, if you wanted to add text around your design and have that ability to shatter it um, after the actions run. And you know, it would look really cool as well because you'll get um, you know you'll get traces of the text appearing uh, on these on these all these bits of glass as well. Um, so that'll add to the complexity, uh, the look of the uh, design. And don't forget, guys, you can um, you know you can combine this action with any um, any other of my actions as well, you know. Say uh, you know I've finished with this design. Okay, I'm happy with that. What I could do is um, merge all these together. So shift select all these layers, Control or Command E. 
Okay, so now I have everything on my background layer, and then you just follow the same procedure, um, you know, with other actions. So you start, you create your brush layer, you brush where you want to apply the effects. You know, I've got sparkle effects, light streak effects, um, oil paint effects, fire effects. You know, if it was um, the fire action, you know, all I need to do is create my brush layer. You know, and I'll start brushing around where I wanted to apply some fire, like that. Um, you know, and if there's brushes included in the download, you've got to make sure that you load up the fire brushes. Run the action, and then you'll get, you know, fire appearing here. So you can, you can really lay up the design and build different elements. So it's not just, you know, you have to run this action, and you restrict it to that effect, and you build and build and build. Okay, um, so that's it, guys. Uh, I'm just going to undo all this and just show the before and after again. So, well, there's the before, um, but my, minus the text, and yeah, there's the after. Uh, so that's it, guys. Um, I hope you have a lot of fun using the action. It is a lot of fun to use and play around with all the layers. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you stuck anywhere along the way or getting errors at the start, um, just send me an email and I'll um, fix it all up for you. Okay, thanks guys.